Hello, I'm Chris Parker with ParkerPhotographic.com and this Lightroom Classic tutorial is all about organizing your images. So you're going to learn some pro tips on getting your images sorted and ranked, how to add keywords, create virtual folders with collections, and more. So if you're ready, let's do it. Now, once I've imported my images into Lightroom Classic, the next step is to begin the process of culling and sorting my images. So the goal is, is to discard the bad images and tag the keepers before I do anything else. This way, I'm not wasting time organizing images that will end up being deleted. So let's check out some images that I have here in this collection. I have 1,064 images, and these were created over a couple of days in August and a couple more days in October. So during that trip, I took 1,064 images. However, if we take a look at my primary folder here, there's only 329 keepers. However, not all of those are original raw files. Some of them are additional file formats based on what I'm going to use those files for. And if I go up to the library filter here under text and I filter out just the NEF files, which are the original raw files, I'm left with 173 images out of 1064. So I rejected 90% of the images. So let me show you how I went about doing this. Now, my preferred method for culling, sorting, rating, and tagging images is to do so in loop view. So we can get to that with the letter E or come down here and click on this icon here. And this will show the image much larger one at a time. This way I can see much better which images are in focus and I can better see the lighting and the composition, which will help me decide on whether or not I need to reject a photo or if maybe it's a keeper. So there's a few different things that I like to do. So let's go over those so you know how I do it and then you can decide for yourself what works best for you. So I like to apply the black flag, which is a rejected tag. You can apply that by clicking on this flag right here or by pressing the letter X. Now, if you want to tag your images with a white flag, because maybe that is going to represent an image that is a keeper, you can do that by clicking on the white flag or pressing the letter P. Personally, I like to apply stars instead. So I'm gonna place my left hand over the letter X so I can keep it there as I scroll through the images with my arrow keys with my other hand. So if I find an image I want to reject, I'm gonna press the letter X and that's going to auto advance to the next image. However, you may not wanna do that depending on how you set up your workflow because if I tag this image with, let's say a white flag, and I also wanna add stars to it, well, it's already advanced. Now I have to go back and then apply those extra settings. So to turn on or turn off auto advance, you're gonna go up to photo and click right here. I'm gonna go ahead and keep that on because that's what I prefer for my workflow. All right, so for this particular image, it's an okay image. I think I can maybe make that sky a little bit better than it is right now, but it's not really a great photo either. So I'm not going to give it five stars because any photo that I give five stars to is an image I think is really good. So I may wanna give it four stars instead because it may have potential. So I'm just gonna press the number four key and that's going to add those four stars and advance to the next image. So I've already rated and tagged some of these. So I'm just gonna go through five star, five star. And then if I want to skip an image and maybe not reject or tag it yet, I can use my arrow keys to advance to the next images. All right, now let me show you what I do once everything is tagged. I'm gonna go back to my original folder here and we're going to go into the grid view by pressing the letter G. And let's see if there are any rejected files in here. I can't remember if there is or not. No, so I'm gonna go ahead and just tag a couple of these. But just to show you real quick, what I would do is I would select all these files with Command or Control plus the letter A, and then I'm going to hit the Delete key or the Backspace key if you're on a PC. And then you're gonna get this window. Do you want to remove them from Lightroom? If you select that option, it will remove them from the Lightroom catalog, but keep those rejected files in the folder on your hard drive. But if you wanna get rid of them completely, you're going to use delete from disk. Now that's going to remove the files permanently. So they're gonna be put in the trash. So you have to decide what works best for you. For me, I know they're not good, 
so I would delete them from the disk. All right, so my next step for getting organized is to add keywords. So keywords are essential for finding specific images among tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of images through the library filter. So let's say I want to find all the images in this catalog that were shot during sunrise. There we are. We have 30 images out of 2,214 in this catalog, and that's possible because I applied the keyword sunrise to these particular images. So that's the benefit of adding keywords. Personally, it's really difficult for me to add keywords or even get organized in general. It's just something that I have to work on, but the more I do it, the easier it becomes and it actually becomes a habit after a while. So let me share with you some tips on how you can make this easier and faster so you can then find those images later on. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the library filter and I'm going to go back into the Letchworth folder here and let's select this image here. So let's say we want to add some keywords to this particular image. There's two different places where we can add keywords. One is the keyword list, which is going to list all the keywords used in the catalog. And then you can select that keyword from here to add that to the file. Now that's not my preferred method. There's actually a quicker way, but this is pretty cool to see a list of all the keywords used and the number of times that keyword was used in the catalog. My preferred method is to use the keywording panel here, and this has three different options to add your keywords. So the first one is a keyword box, and then you can begin typing in whatever keyword you wanna add for that particular image. And then you're going to use the comma key to separate them. And then as you type, it's going to give you suggestions based on keywords that you've used previously. And then once you hit your enter key, that will continue adding that particular file. Okay, so that's one way of doing it, one image at a time. Or what you can do is you can select multiple images and do it that way as well. Or you can also use the keyword suggestion. So Lightroom is going to provide nine different terms or keywords that you've used in the past that are similar to this particular image. And then you can just come in and click on these to add them to the keyword box up here. But again, if you have multiple images selected, then it will add those keywords to all those files. If you have multiple images that you have in the same location, same subject, you can do that with multiple images. Now, another quick way to add keywords is to use a keyword set. And this way, instead of using keyword suggestions provided by Lightroom, you can create your own keyword sets. So if I click right here, you'll see I have Point Pelee and Letchworth State Park. So haven't traveled a lot since I've created this particular catalog, but those were the two places that I've gone to the most. And I plan on going back to both of those locations in the future. So I created keyword sets to allow me to add keywords to those images that I create in the future. So Point Pelee is right down the street from me. It's like 10 minutes away. So what I can do is I can click on that and then I can click on each one of these keywords to add them into the keyword tags up here for that particular file or multiple files if I have multiple files selected. Now, if you choose a keyword by mistake, all you have to do is click on that keyword again to remove it from the keyword set or the keyword tags up here. Okay, so once I've completed adding keywords, I'll then edit the images and begin adding labels. So labels to me are a method of choosing images that I want to do something with later on. For example, some images I'll want to post on Facebook, a few I may want to print and others I may want to sell as a stock photo or maybe use in a calendar that I want to create for the following year. And I'm going to use a different label for each scenario. So for me, the blue label represents images that will be posted on social media. Green are photos that I will print, which I've actually done for most of these images and you can see some of them behind me. I also have a yellow label that represent images that have been completed or edited to perfection and only the original raw files get this label. So the benefit of this is I can sort and find images without a label, which means I still have a lot of images to edit. Okay, so I've saved the best way to organize your images for last, which is using collections. So a collection is a virtual folder that will allow you to sort your images into these virtual folders 
and can be used to organize your images in various ways. So let me show you how these work. So if we scroll down here, we have a panel called collections and there's three different types of collections that you can create. You're gonna click right here to create your collections. And the first one is a basic collection where you need to manually add the images to. So you're just gonna click on create collection give it a name and then any selected photos will be added to this if you have this turned on. So if I click create, it will be added. And you can see down here, I have a Letchworth, which I just showed you earlier. I have a Point Peely calendar 2024 and a stock photos collections. So this is a great way to organize your images outside of the original folders. But my favorite type of collection is a smart collection. So if we look right here, we have create smart collection. And what this is going to allow you to do is create a custom variable or variables that will then tell Lightroom, okay, if this image has the following rules, then put it in this collection. So you can set any one of these items here as the first scenario or part of the rule and then is or is not and then these different variables here will change based on what you select over here. So let me show you how this works. And for this catalog, I've created a print and social media smart collection. And the rules that I apply to these is based on a specific color label. And if I select a new image here and apply a blue color label, that will be added to the social media smart collection automatically. We have 19 images right now. Once I apply that blue label, it is added to that smart collection. How awesome is that? I love it. So this is a great way to organize your images even further into virtual folders by letting Lightroom do all the hard work based on the rules that you set up for that particular smart collection. Now, once you've organized all your images, you need to decide how to edit the images. And to learn how to edit your images, check out that video tutorial next.